What up, dudes? Rob Hero. So real quick, uh, let's let's do this little breakdown. Fox Sports does a great job with uh, their camera work for pitchers. Uh, I think Smoltz was on the call. This was early in the game. They did a front view in slow motion. So I have them synced up at ball release. And uh, honestly, I haven't really prepped for this video. Like I haven't even watched it and have any key points of like what I want to talk about. Spitballing. All right. But if you guys want any more insights on pitching mechanics, I have an ebook out. I'll throw it in the uh, I'll throw the link in the description, or you can hang around to the end of the video and click the the little card that comes up. It's a complete guide to pitching mechanics, about 200 pages worth of everything I got on pitching mechanics. So we're going to be referring to a lot of mechanical components and terminology of like drive leg, initial move, hip rotation, lead leg block, arm action, trunk rotation. So if you guys want a deeper dive on that, you can be sure to head to the description below. All right. So the initial move, let's go ahead and just do go right into it. If you guys want to take a deeper dive, Kyle, Wright, Two over in the glove, no out. Zach Wheeler looks like he, he's straight up. Got a finger hood. <laughs> Is that deep insight or what? So, all right. And you can tell that Kyle Wright starts his delivery a little bit earlier than Wheeler. Wheeler, you just know that like Wheeler's got such long levers and he utilizes those long levers, whereas I think Kyle Wright's a little bit more compact. Kyle Wright's got such a good story from, what was he, sixth overall pick, had a bunch of mechanical changes, and now it looks like he's found his rhythm. But both have this similar, what I call pendulum rhythmic initial move where the hands go up, or sorry, the hands go down from from the starting point of being up, hands go down, and then they go up as the lead leg goes into leg lift, right? So you can see that both with these guys. Um, I think, yeah, Zach Wheeler has this little shimmy pause here, Johnson, right? Like just kind of make sure that his bearings are right with his foot, whereas Zach Wheeler, or sorry, uh, Kyle Wright, just kind of gets this little step again, right? So I think the uh, a big takeaway within the initial move is make sure there's stability within that drive foot. If the, if the drive foot is unstable, then the drive leg is going to be unstable. If the drive leg is unstable, then there's going to be a collapsing effect. You're not going to be able to store energy. Then you're going to be limited to the amount of energy that you're going to be able to produce um, into the ground, right? That's a lot, I know. But rhythmic initial move, hands go down, make sure we get our bearings, make sure we're stable. Can we talk about how Kyle Wright looks like he has like a size 20 shoe? Holy smokes. And then now the uh, the leg lift is going to occur. Kyle Wright's going to be in rhythmic in rhythm with his hands and his lead foot, whereas Wheeler is actually going to have his hands go up in delay of his lead foot going up. All right. And now this is another thing that I talk about a lot with guys that maybe are too fixated on like locking in visually to their target. So you have Kyle Wright, who's obviously locked in, doesn't really take his eyes off, um, you know, the target the entire time, maybe there, maybe a look down there. And then as the initial lift comes up, he's locked in, whereas Wheeler, he's lifting and looking away. This is just something that I think and, and, for my personal kind of journey has felt as if it relaxes me, um, maybe like a subconscious relaxation, right? So if you take your eyes off, maybe you can get a little relaxed. So now this is interesting. I've done some videos on Zach Wheeler's mechanics and, and how, you know, it's an, he does an interesting descending move. So just for those of you guys who haven't really listened or watched a lot of my stuff, the, um, the loading phase of the drive leg, right? So absorb produce and store energy within that drive leg and a really good way to you know make sure that we do that kind of efficiently is what Kyle Wright does is extend get into full knee extension of the lead leg as hand separation occurs so then the lead leg kind of become a little bit more neutral and the drive leg becomes our motor right whereas like you see with Zach Wheeler how he kind of comes up knee flexion and now he's going to come down and then kind of looks like he gets extremely aggressive with that lead leg, um, even though that's not the case. Wheeler's somebody that's going to rely a ton on like rotational energy, which is something that you can see kind of within the way he utilizes his glove side mechanics to kind of counter rotate, extra counter rotation of his trunk, right? Like he does that really well. 
the reason why I don't necessarily teach like a move like this is because I think a lot of younger kids will struggle with the cervical rotation aspect of it, right? So if you can't really rotate your neck to where you can see visually like the target, your body is just adaptable to where it's going to pull early so you can visualize it. And then you're going to be susceptible to early trunk and limited rotational energy. But obviously, Zach Wheeler does that really well. Um, I think a really another cool aspect of just watching both of these guys is there's like we all know pitching mechanics is like extremely different right from guy to guy but at the same whoa sorry at the same time um there's so many similarities right and i think uh something from the deception standpoint that both of these guys do really well is like look at where the hand separation occurs so you have kyle wright doing it here and this is something i'm envious of because i don't do this that well but he, hand separation is occurring behind that lead lead leg and it's not that hitters are like looking at this area right because then they would just their eyes would shift and have to look back up and they don't do that they kind of just pick a tunnel out where the arm slot is and just stay there but i will say you know having a father that played in the big leagues like he, he says i got you can see the white you know whether, whether it be your your peripherals or not and it kind of promotes just a little comfort so you can see like kyle right you're not really seeing the ball same with zach wheeler you're not seeing that ball so that's just something that aids in that all right um so kyle right very similar in regards to this glove side mechanics both guys are dropping glove side and this is something i talk about in the ebook um in terms of the glove side mechanics chapter and how kind of certain components can be utilized within the glove side to kind of aid in, in you know, a, a generation of energy that you're looking for. So now we're going to get into the drive phase. All right. And you can kind of see like both of these guys very similar in terms of uh, that uh, timing of their back foot and that, that back hip in terms of the rotation. Now this is where it gets like extremely interesting to me because like where Zach Wheeler, I think, throws on average what two to three miles an hour harder than Kyle Wright and you can see why so this is another component that I talk about in terms of guys that throw a little bit cross body meaning like their lead foot anchors down not in a linear line from where their dry foot was and both of these guys kind of have that dynamic going on but since I think you know Zach Wheeler the amount of counter rotation he looks you know let's go with this but the, the amount of counter rotation like it's so impressive how he does this so well right so like you can see the back foot just watch how this kind of occurs and this is where you look at you know two to three extra miles per hour okay so watch the back foot and the timing in which that heel peels off all right so the heel peels off right there both of these guys very similar timing and now as he as as wheeler's going to come anchor down look at the difference in the back foot positioning which usually gives us a pretty good indication of the positioning of the the pelvis and the timing in which those hips initiated rotation so if like we have a foot that's that like your hips are you know well into rotation we look at like kind of halfway you want the halfway point whereas you know kyle wright over here like yeah his hips are rotated he's creating good you know stretch and good segmentation and he does a great job of creating pec stretch here um but look at the difference whereas like you see this and this this association where you see it and that's a little bit back and again this is like the difference right this is the difference from from two to three um all right so then you you generate all this rotational energy right and then you capture rotational energy you capture it by positioning of the arm action in in such accordance to you know the lead foot anchoring down this is the creation of, of stretch and segmentation and then you capture it and then you pull through right you release all that tension pull through boom very similar slots too right very good extension from both you can even see here Kyle Wright kind of peels and, and disconnects from the back foot a little bit early. Um, both of these guys are, are crossfire guys too. So their lead leg block mechanics are going to look a little bit different, right? So the knee's going to kind of shoot and then really brace here. And then clearing the hips, foot's got to turn. But really good arm action mechanics from both of them, man. Look at the, the deceleration pattern, the extension of the trunk, the flexion of the trunk, buying more time for the arm de to decelerate. Kyle Wright does a really good job bending the elbow. And, I mean, you have a really good window of deceleration time for Wheeler as well. I think Wheeler just does such a good job with, like, his levers and how he maximizes those levers productions. Right? It's 
it's fun to watch. So rhythmic movements influence optimal timing with the initial move, drive leg mechanics, load, um, produce, and store, and capture rotational energy by segmentation, stretch, pull the arm through, arm speed's not generated by the arm alone, and then decelerate the arm to efficiently accelerate. That's all I got on these two studs. Um, and big game tonight. I'm recording this on October 15th, so I think they play. No, it's it's this morning. Shoot, they play in like 30 minutes. Oh, wow. Big game. All right, guys, much love. Um, links in the description for more breakdowns and, like I said, that ebook. I'm Robbie Rowe, and I am out. And before I'm out, quick shout out to OnForm, which is the free app that's available on the App Store. And this is the app that I use right here. I use it on my iPad. I have an Apple Pencil, and it's freaking dope to be able to draw, do arrows, I do a circle. I can even do this Johnson right here. Look at that, huh? A little degrees, straight line. Sure, we got that too. We can change the color. I want green. No, I want white. Boom. I want red line. There it is. Oh, I want squiggly lines in red. Nah, let's do yellow. Yeah. This is all on form on form like i said free downloadable app from the app store check it out on your ipad i got it on my phone too i got a stored library of all mlb videos and even my own personal mechanical videos but super dope all right check them out now i'm out love you guys god bless see ya